Town Hall at Town Hall Works, and I'm with, uh, who is this guy? <laughs> um, my name's Josh. Um, I'm the uh, general manager here at Alpha Fired Arts. I'm one of the store owners as well, so um, we're here to talk about kiln shelves today, right? Yeah, right. I, I'm, I'm here to pick up some kiln shelves that I ordered, and you're going to explain to us a little bit about the different kinds of kiln shelves and what they do. Right, right so... Um, I'm going to get out of the picture. <laughs> These are our, um, our kiln shelves here. These are all a... Let me... Cordierite material. Um, it's a clay refractory composition. Um, they sell these shelves at different thicknesses for different temperatures. So this is going to be the 5 8 thickness, which is ideal for the lower temperatures in ceramics. Um, and then, uh, so they're going to sell, um, we sell one inch versions of these, which are more Ideal for the higher temperatures, so cone five and up, you're gonna want a thicker kiln shelf. So um, so that's the one thing. Um, we use the five eighths thicknesses at cone five just because they are thinner, they're lighter, easier to load. Um, but um, yeah, they do have a tendency to warp over time. So the durability factor isn't there at the cone five temperature range. Um, so the one inch are going to last as long as you have them at the higher temperatures pretty much. They do need a layer of kiln wash on the surface to protect them. Um, that's one thing. There are different compositions of kiln shelves. Uh, so this is going to be another alternative of kiln shelf. This is the uh, Corlite shelf. It is also a cordierite. Uh, clay composition of a uh, refractory material, um, very lightweight, um, and they are really flat. They're, which is great if you need a the full surface area to keep something flat in the firing. Um, it's a great option. I know they use these a lot with uh, glass kilns because they're able to make a really large kiln shelf with this kind of structure. So um, great option for um, a large kiln shelf. Um, and then posts, they do the same thing with posts as far as thickness. There's a one inch thick uh, post, or sorry, this is a two inch thick post. Um, the two inch thick posts are great for cone 10 when you're getting up into the really high temperatures. Um, the one and a half inch is uh, really good for cone five and under. Uh, gives you, it's all about space, you know. Um, do you wanna? Okay, so um, these are the two different materials that we have for kiln shelves. This is gonna be the uh, cordierite. Um, and it's also called core light, so it's got the hollowed out cores here, which makes them a lot lighter. Um, and then this is going to be the nitride bonded silicon carbide material. Um, very durable, very hard surface. You can actually, if glaze gets on this surface, you can just pop it off or take an angle grinder straight to it, get the glaze right off without damaging the shelf. This one would damage the shelf, so we put a layer of kiln wash, a protective barrier on the surface, just to um, keep your your shelf nice and clean, no divots, no no nicks in it. Um, the one thing about the core light shelves is they are susceptible to thermal shock, um, so they're not going to be really ideal for alternative firings uh, like wood, uh, salt, anything like that with a heavy atmosphere. Um, these are going to be much better. For um, alternative firings, they do sell other options that are thicker, more durable. Um, they sell a standard silicon carbide shelf that's, I think, one inch thick, which is an extremely durable shelf for high temperatures, uh, things like that. So, Go ahead and start the camera. I did. Uh, is it going? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, I want to talk just about for a second, Josh, about how pe different people stack 
one shelf on top of the other. And I did forever, I did them like this, which I've come to find out is the wrong way because I was bending my kiln shelves. And the correct way that most people do it is they use three posts, correct? Yeah, yeah. And so they stand up perfectly well that way with only three posts. And that way, next time you fire, you just flip the shelf over and so it doesn't constantly get the same warp. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's nice to be able to flip your shelves in a, a triangle structure like that just makes it so much easier to get your shelf level. Um, it also gives you a lot more room. Um, those posts do take up a lot of room in a firing. So um, I think uh, another important thing is to make sure your, your columns all the way up are lined up with each post so you get a nice structural support uh, all the way throughout your, uh, your stack of shelves. Cool. Yeah, so thanks so much, Josh, for letting us come over here and learn a little bit about killing shells. We're going to go home and fire now. <laughs> Great, appreciate it. Thanks. I got home from Alpha with my new kiln shells. I'm gonna put some uh, kiln wash on them to get them ready for their first firing. Now, kiln wash is just some EPK kaolin and probably some silica or so aluminum hydrate, alumina hydrate, but uh, I can have some left over from a, a, a old commercial one, but you can find recipes for them online. This protects the shelf when it gets fired in case glaze spills on it or whatever. And uh, be sure if you uh, use this and mix up your own, be sure that you uh, wear a mask, because especially silica, it's very bad for you to inhale. I really want to thank Josh and everybody at Alpha for helping us today and I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.